Uh, go ahead and find uh, Mark chapter number 1. Mark chapter number 1, and my wife's going to come sing. shelters thee under his wings, yea, so gently sustaineth. Hast thou not seen how thy desires ever have been granted in what he ordaineth? Praise ye the Lord who with marvelous wisdom hath made thee, deck thee with health and with loving hands, God it made thee. How often grief has he not brought thee really, spreading his wings for to shade thee. Praise ye the Lord, oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that hath life and breath, come now with praises before him. Let the amen sound from his people again, gladly for a we adore him. Hey Amen. It's a wonderful song. I remember seeing that many times on the street there in Switzerland and Germany. And uh, especially in the Christmas markets, we always sung it much there. It was always a real blessing. Love singing that song in German as well. Mark chapter number one, Mark chapter number one, once you find your place there, we'll stand for the honoring of the reading of the Word of God. Mark chapter one. Mark chapter 1 this morning, appreciate you being here, appreciate the visitors we have, and appreciate your smiling faces this morning. Mark chapter number 1, we'll pick it up there in verse number 40, Mark chapter 1 and verse number 40. The Bible says this, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he strictly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in a desert place and they came to him from every quarter. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we sure thank you for Jesus this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I pray, Lord, this morning that you would help me hide me behind the shadow of the cross this morning. Lord, I pray, Lord, you'd fill me, Lord, with the Spirit of God and, Lord, empty me of self. Forgive me for any sin, any iniquity in my heart and my soul that would hinder me from being a, vo a vessel this morning, a voice, Lord, crying in the wilderness. Lord, make straight your paths. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your word would go forth and pierce in the hearts and the souls and the minds of the hearers this morning, that they may, Lord, uh, uh, be affected this morning, not by me, but by the Holy Spirit of God, by the word of God, Father. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would please do a work this morning. Help us, Lord. Give us understanding. Give us understanding, perception 
through the Word of God, and we'll thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Mark chapter number 1, we begin going through the book of Mark several weeks ago, and now we come to the last portion, the last paragraph, if you will, the last section in Mark chapter number 1. We've kind of got underway of what the book of Mark's about. It's about presenting an amazing Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ about his amazing miracles, his amazing actions, and what he's done in the hearts and the lives of people. And uh, Mark, John Mark, uh, describes Jesus Christ as utterly amazing, sore amazing, astonishing at the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We come here to our, our passage of Scripture, and uh, John Mark, under the divine inspiration, I believe God uses a man... I believe he uses his personality. I believe he uses his character. And then I believe he fills him with the divine Holy Spirit and uses him uh, to, to orchestrate his will, his divine accomplishments, and his will in this earth. And I believe he used John Mark here. What an amazing thing. He used John Mark to record something about a leper. At the very close, he chose John Mark under the divine inspiration of God, chose... Uh, to record, to close out chapter 1, a very notable miracle, an amazing and astounding miracle about healing a leper man. What an amazing thing. I begin to ponder this week and read through the scriptures and meditate on this passage. And I was honestly, I, I'm not just saying this, but I was utterly amazed. I was so amazed that a God articulating and controlling and orchestrating that at this time, at this purpose, God sprang in and healed a leper man. There's much to this, and uh, there's, there's different things within the Scriptures. You see, there, there's what uh, we call the surface of the Scriptures. Uh, there's things that you just read, and you read the face value, and what it says is what it is, and you get devotional material from that. You maybe get some practical application. Uh, you get a little uh, stirred up, a little bit of zeal, and man, this is good stuff. Uh, uh, those are devotional material, that's surface stuff. But may I say this? That every passage, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, <laughs> for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works. There's also above and beyond in this passage, not just the surface material, <laughs> there's the substance to this passage. <laughs> and the more I begin to look, not just at the surface, not just at the spiritual, the devotional application, but the doctrinal application, I was sore amazed. <laughs> And I begin to see some things and lay out some things by, by the, the Lord's leading that I think is utterly amazing. Uh, we, if you remember those that's uh, been with me, uh, the last several weeks we preached several messages through Mark chapter 1 on the amazing Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We preached about astonished at Capernaum. <laughs> astonished at Capernaum. Remember, he was in the synagogue at Capernaum, and they was astonished at his doctrine. And so what you see is the religious crowd, the religious people, those that was devoted to Jehovah God, there was this sitting there within the synagogues, they was a sore amazed, they was astonished, they was at awe at the Lord Jesus Christ. Right after that, I preached last week, on his fame spread abroad. And we saw in the passage that everyone, the, all the city, the Bible says, all the city round about came to the house where Jesus was and they would, for his fame spread abroad. So not only the religious leaders, the devout uh, worship of Jehovah God, I had heard of Christ, but all the people heard about it, even into the king's palace. They had heard what was going on, and so they, uh, they began to come to the house, and they were sore amazed at what Jesus had done. All this sets the stage for here comes a leper. And at this precise time, at this precise moment, Jesus heals a leper man. Now, again, there is the... Uh, the surface application, the de devotional, the spiritual, and I'm going to give you part of that because I think it's good stuff. 
I think it's good to get something practical. I think it's good to get something devotional from the Word of God and something uh, practical and applicable to your own life. I think we can look at that this morning, but may I say this? I can't get it all in. I know it's just about four verses, but there's a whole lot of stuff in this passage that God wants to give you. If Those that are serious about the Word of God, those that desire what is in this book, why did God Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, you ever thought about that? You ever got your Bible out on, on Saturday morning, on Thursday afternoon? You ever got your Bible out and started thinking, the God that spoke this world into existence, that created the sun, the moon, the stars, and all that therein is, saw fit in His infinite, His omnipotent power, His, his wisdom, that He saw fit to record this passage. The eternal word, what an amazing God we have. And I want to give you some things this morning. If you look down at the passage, so the religious leaders are astounded and, and all the city has come together and he begins to heal a leper man. Notice there in verse number 40, verse number 40, the Bible says this, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying to him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said to him, I will be thou clean. Can I just go ahead and let open up the crane of worms this morning? Can I just say that the surface, the devotional picture this morning is a sinner seeking a Savior. It's a sinner that comes to salvation. That's the devotional. That's the practical application this morning. I want to give you some thoughts on But can I say this morning, we see simply on the surface, we see a leprous man that had a great disease, that came to Jesus. Jesus moved with compassion, healed him. But look at verse 44. Excuse me, yeah, verse 44, the Bible says this. And he said unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priests, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded. Notice, for a testimony unto them. Can I just say this morning that uh, there was a leper, he was healed, Jesus had compassion, Jesus willed, Jesus wanted to make him clean, but can I say there's more to it than just wanting to make him clean? He wanted him to be a testimony unto others. (laughs) Look there again at the end of the verse, it says, for a testimony unto them. (laughs) Can I preach this morning just for a little while on an amazing testimony? An amazing testimony testimony now at this time the book of mark i preached for several weeks now the lord jesus christ has healed a woman uh peter's mother-in-law of a fever he actually has cast out devils out of a man right in the midst of the synagogue he has brought uh, unto the house many that were ill and sick of diverse diseases and jesus healed many of them now jesus is a miracle working god and he begins to do many things But can I say this morning, a leper is something different. It's not just that I got the old sniffles. It's not that I got the Wuhan. It ain't got something like that. It ain't I got bronchitis. It ain't even as bad as I got cancer. Leprosy in the Bible was an incurable disease. You read through the Bible, there was no medicine. There was no balm that you could apply. There there was no uh, sacrifice. Uh, There was nothing that could be done to heal you of leprosy. If you got leprosy, the Bible gives strict, strict commandments about leprosy. That you know what? Uh, You are to be put without the camp and the priests are to look on you and to shut you up and keep you. You actually are supposed to put your hand over your mouth when you get near anybody at all. And cry out, unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. And that tells the crowd, those neighbors, those people passing by, to stay away from you. Leprosy was not just you're sick. It's not just you had a fever. Leprosy was something far greater. Far greater. I want you to see number one. In an amazing testimony, I want you to notice his problem. He was a leper. He was a leper there in verse 40. It says there, and there came a leper to him, 
He was a leper. Notice his problem. Leprosy was an incurable disease, as I've said this morning. Something that starts, may I say, very slowly on the inside. Leprosy is a bacterial infection that gets within the bloodstream and uh, once it reaches the heart, it begins to pump and flow and spread that incurable, infectious bacteria throughout the whole body. Leprosy begins very slowly on the inside and eventually, over time, manifests itself on the outside. Leprosy in the Bible is a picture of sin. You know where your sin starts? Inside. Inside your heart. Mamma don't know about it. Grandpa don't have a clue what you're thinking, what your heart's going after. Your wife don't know. Your husband don't know. Your children might not know. But that sin is deep within inside of you. And over time, over time, it'll begin to manifest itself on the outside. And that's the way sin operates. Leprosy starts out <coughs> on the inside of the body, and then it begins to manifest itself slowly, slowly on the outside of the body. It begins with a little bit of skin irritation, a little bit of redness, a little bit of discoloration. Time goes on, and it begins to be boils and a rash. begins to discolor the hair particles there on that section of the skin and it begins to uh, a whitening of the hair and it begins those boils turn into stabbing that stabbing begins to wither away at the limbs it begins to attack the soft tissues the ears and the nose and the mouth the lips there and they say that a leper there his face will begin to swell a bit begin to be chapped and begin to be red and discoloration. It'll spring to his fingertips and his limbs, his toes and his feet and it'll begin to, to wither, wither his fingers and wither his hand as he's a crippled man, a crippled woman. What is happening is actually it's the rottening of the flesh. The rottening of the flesh. Leprosy begins to send off a stench. You ever been around a dead carcass? Ever had roadkill stuck to the bottom of your, your vehicle or something like that for a few days in the summertime? Uh, the rottening of the flesh, the decaying of the body, that is actually what leprosy is. It begins there in your body, your fingertips, your nose, your ears, uh, the eyebrows, that soft tissue begins to rot away. Brother Tommy Tillman, a missionary there in Thailand that works in a leprous colony, gives a testimony as he was sitting around a table with several lepers there and they was having fellowship and having dinner and they over there in Thailand are not as sophisticated as Americans. We eat with a fork and spoon and maybe a knife sometimes, but they eat with their hands. And so they had a big bowl of goulash, some noodles and different things, and everybody around that table was reaching in and grabbing handfuls and eating their food. Uh, missionary Tommy Tylen, uh, excuse me, Tommy Tillman there, he's sitting there around the table, and he's reaching in, and he grabs, and there lays a piece of a finger that one of those lepers that was sitting there, because of the decay of the body, because of his, his inflammation there and his decaying of his skin and his fingers, his fingertip literally fell off there. That's what leprosy begins to do. And it begins to have a stench about it. Uh, Mr. Tillman said this, that you can barely get within six feet of somebody that is freshly diagnosed with leprosy. He said, but once the disease began to manifest itself, he said, on a windy day, you dare get in with 150 feet of someone that's got leprosy. They stink, the decaying of the body. You know what leprosy is? Uh, leprosy is the decaying of the body, death before departure. <laughs> You're not dead yet, yet your body's already decaying. You know what the Bible says? The wages of sin is death. You know what your sin does? It stinks. It's offensive to me. 
It bothers me. It ought to bother you. It ought to bother my wife. It ought to bother my children. Your sin is heinous. Uh, the, the, Paul said this, that all oh, that your sin might appear sin and become exceeding sinful. You know what you'd like to do? It ain't that bad. <laughs> All your face is chapped a little bit. All your lips are swelled. Let's put on a little bit of makeup. Let's part your hair a little bit. Let's make it look like it ain't that bad. Uh, let's wrap up your hands. Oh, you've done lost a finger. Let's put on a glove and let, let nobody know what's truly going on with you. It would be embarrassing if the family found out. It would be embarrassing if the church found out. It would be embarrassing if everybody knew what you really did. Sin is like unto leprosy. And we see the problem is there is no fixing leprosy. There's no cure. There's no antidote. There's no uh, shot. Uh, can, I, can I say this? There, there, there was no uh, 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 in, anything that you could do. I'm trying to think of a bomb or anything like that. There's nothing you could rub. There's no way you could hide and cure that leprosy. You know, there's no cure of sin outside of the blood of Christ. Outside of God Almighty touching you and forgiving you and healing you. There is no cure for your sin. Hey, you can go back there and put money in the plate. You can donate online. You can get up here and sing. You can hit the altar and weep. And you can, do, you can get baptized. You can join the church. But there is no cure for your sin outside of a miracle of God. You know what? It's amazing here. The religious crowd had begun to see that he's amazing. He's astounding. This teacher must be sent from God. They was astonished at Capernaum. All the city is famed, spread abroad. But now they come that he touched a leper. Now listen now. In Israel's history, very few people had ever been healed of leprosy. The last time Israel knew of a man being healed of leprosy was all the way back in 2 Kings chapter number 6. Remember Naaman the Syrian? He wasn't even a Jew. He was a Syrian there, the captain of the Syrian army, and he got healed by Elijah there. And you know what? Uh, the, the, so what was happening here, the religious crowd and all the city about saw what an amazing thing. He healed leprosy. I want you to see the problem. There was no healing. There was nothing he could do. There was nothing, nowhere he could go. Notice his position. His position, look quickly if you will, in Leviticus chapter number 13. <coughs> Leviticus chapter number 13, the Bible lays out in Leviticus chapter number 13 and 14, it lays out the law of the leper. The rules, the regulations, what you're to do and how you're to treat them, what the priests are, how they're to react. Leviticus chapter 13, I want you to look down in verse number 14, or 44, excuse me, Leviticus 13 and verse 44. The Bible says this. He is a leprous man, he is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean unclean his plague is in his head what a thing you know where leprosy is it's in your heart it's in your head it's in your mind the Bible says this in verse 45 and the leper in whom the plague is his clothes shall be rent and his head bare and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry unclean unclean and all the days wherein the plague shall be in him he shall be defiled he is unclean notice the Bible says there in verse 46 he shall dwell alone without the camp shall his habitation be I want you to know not, not only the problem of the leper this morning he was a leper it was far beyond any other diseases far beyond any other problem it's far beyond anything the priest could do the religious leaders the synagogue couldn't help him the high priest couldn't help him the king couldn't help him it was a great 
problem. And it was within him. That pictures you and I that have sin. It's a great problem. I can't help you. The truth of the matter is, I cannot change your heart. Only God can cleanse your heart of your sin. But we notice the position. It kept him without. He shall dwell alone. You know what your sin does? Your sin separates you from you and your God. My Bible tells me in Isaiah 59 that the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your sins and your iniquities have separated between you and your God so that he will not hear. You know what your sin does? It puts a block between you and a holy God, between you and a righteous God. Listen, God is more holy. God is high and holy and majestic. And he, he says, sin shall not dwell with me. He told the religious leaders in John, the book of John, he said, if you die in your sins where I am, you cannot come. Sin separates you. Hey, you might be saved in here. You might be born again. You might be a child of God. But you walk in darkness. You lie and do not the truth. And you broken fellowship with the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll have no fellowship with God Almighty because of the sin in your life. Once you notice the problem, but only not only that, the position, it pits you away from God. Look there, if you will, in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1 this morning. The leper, the religious crowd couldn't help him. The king and all the pomp and pride he could not help him. He had a great problem. He had a horrible position away from God without the camp, separated from God. Notice there in verse number 40, notice his plea. The Bible says this, and there came a leper to him, beseeching him. <laughs> beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying to him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Three things I see in his plea. It was a beseeching plea. Lo notice the word beseech means this in the 1828 dictionary. It means to entreat. It means to implore. It means to ask. Watch it, with urgency. This leper came to Jesus and he needed something. He's beseeching him, Master, Lord, I need you. The religious crowd can't help me. The king can't help me. All the region round about. And I've heard of your fame. I've heard what you can do. Wilt thou make me clothe? If thou wilt, thou can. I know that you can make me clean. He begins to be, beseech him with urgency. Oh God, oh God, help me. Can I say this morning, your sin problem, <laughs> that it's a great problem that no one in here can help you with, <laughs> that's put you in a great position away from the fold of God, away from the fellowship of the saints, away from the fellowship of God Almighty, that you know what? <laughs> you better plea. You, it's an urgent matter. <laughs> Boy, to be uh, the worst position there is, is to be a Christian and be outside of the will of God, outside of fellowship of God, and know you are grieving the Holy Spirit of God. What a sad thing. We see his plea is uh, uh, it's, uh, with earnestness. And notice there it says he kneeling down to him. He besieged him. He kneeled down to him. Notice the humility. You know, the only way you'll ever get help this morning is to realize your problem is sin, realize your position, it separates you from God, and have an earnest plea beseeching God with humility. Get down. You don't need to stand up. You need to get down because of your sin. You need to get down because of your transgression. You need to be humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. We see his pleas earnest. We see it's humbling. Notice there he says this, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. You know what he realized? He didn't know the exact mind of God. He didn't know what God wanted for his life. He probably knew in his heart, 
He deserved leprosy. He deserved to be without the camp. You ever looked in your own heart, looked in your own soul and realized what you deserve? You don't deserve being in church this morning. If I really knew what you've done, if I really knew who you were, you really knew who I was, you know what? We were to realize we need to humble ourselves and we need to say, man, if thou wilt. No, God, I know you're able. I, I don't doubt your ability. If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. I know you're able, but, oh, God, I know I don't deserve it. You know what he did? He not only had an earnest plea, not only had a humbling plea, but he had a surrendering plea. He left it at the will of God. All right, Lord, whatever you want. Whatever you want, Lord, if thou wilt. When's the last time you came to God and said, okay, God, whatever you want. God, whatever you want, you plead to the Lord earnestly, humbly, and completely surrender to the Lord. An amazing testimony. An amazing testimony starts with a great problem. <laughs> a horrific position, but an earnest plea. And look with me fourthly this morning, 41, verse number 41. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. It, it has an amazing testimony. It has praise to it. You will never hear an amazing testimony without hearing someone truly say how in the depths of despair they was. They're, they'll, they'll tell you about their great problems. They'll tell you their position, how far from God they was. And they'll tell you, man, they came to Christ and had a plea. And they'll have a praise to it. You know, there's no one in here that can have an amazing testimony without praising the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't the religious crowd that healed him. It wasn't the rulers that healed him. It wasn't the king, uh, Herod, that healed him. It was Jesus that healed him. It's an amazing thing. The Bible says this in Acts 4 and 20, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. The Bible says there that leper, Jesus, the leper came to him and said, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. He humbled himself and he besought the Lord and, and uh, pleaded with him, surrendered to his will. And Jesus said, I will. <laughs> I will. And the Bible says immediately, immediately, he, that leprosy departed from him. You know what? What a great thing. It has a, a praise to it in Psalms chapter 40. Psalm chapter 40 this morning. I want you to notice what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 40 and verse 1. <coughs> Psalm chapter 40 and verse number 1, the Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are, they, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are up to usward. They cannot be reckoned in order, uh, up in order unto thee. If I would de declare and speak unto them, they are more than can be numbered. You know what, this morning I, I can say this, I got an amazing testimony. Boy, I was in a horrible pit. I was down in despair. I had no hope. My parents couldn't help me. My, my, my religious leaders, the churches around couldn't help me. There was no help in me. But Jesus came by my way. Hey, I got something to praise him for. Boy, I want to open my, he put a new song in my mouth. I know I can't sing, but I got something to shout about. I know I'm nothing wonderful, but boy, Jesus cleansed me. I'm whole. I'm unreprovable. I'm unblameable. I'm holy, set apart, sanctified, justified in the sight of God Almighty. Boy, that's wonderful. That's an amazing testimony of how deep in sin I was, how far in despair I was, but Jesus 
save my soul. Boy, there's something to praise him for. Boy, we got something to shout about. Every son, woman, and man, and child, every boy and girl, everybody at Victory Baptist Church, or to shout the praises unto God. Boy, if you're saved in here, if you're born again, you was on your way to hell, you was in depths of despair, but Jesus saved you. Boy, you got something to praise about. Boy, you know what the Bible said there in Mark? And Jesus said, hey, listen, go show yourself to the priest. You know what the Bible says? That he went abroad. He began to blaze abroad the matter. Tell everybody, everywhere, what Jesus has done to him. I wonder this morning if you got an amazing testimony. What's Jesus done for you? Boy, he's done something for me. He's had mercy on me. He's forgiven me for sin that you don't even know about. What a blessing God's forgiven me. God's helped me. God's strengthened me. Boy, I was in a horrible pit, but he set me up on a rock to stay. On the Lord Jesus Christ is my rock. Listen this morning. Look back at Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Psalms 34, verse number 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Is that you this morning, Christian? Or do you not have an amazing testimony? Is that you this morning? Do you have something in your heart, in your soul, you want to shout and praise the Lord about, sing praises unto Him about, because He's an amazing God. He saved you from a horrible pit. You had a great problem. You was in a horrific position. You pleaded unto Him, and boy, He saved you. Look at verse 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Boy, I love hearing about somebody's testimony. I sat down yesterday evening with a couple, and they begin to tell me, the man and his wife, how they came to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That woman had a testimony. She got saved as a teenager. She started being faithful to God and serving the Lord, and then got married to a lost man, unsaved, condemned in the world, <laughs> condemned to the Lord. But you know what he said, that woman? He said, I just thank God for my wife. She stayed faithful to God, stayed faithful to church. I started going with her. Before long, I started hearing that message, and I got saved, got born again. Boy, there you know what? The humble shall hear, and it says there, and be glad. It rejoices my heart to hear your testimony. It thrills my soul to hear when God saved you. Boy, it stirs me that God saved me, that God saved you, and what a wonderful thing there is. An amazing testimony. An amazing testimony has praise to it. It gives the glory, glorify. Look there at verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Hey, listen, sometimes church ain't about you. It ain't always about you getting under conviction. It ain't always about you hitting the altar. Sometimes we just come to church to exalt him, to praise him, to lift up the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory, to the glory of God the Father. You know what? Sometimes it's good just to worship Jesus this morning. Hey, listen, it says this, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Hey, listen to me now this morning, friend. Listen to me now, saint of God, child of God. There's praise to an amazing testimony. You ought to be able to praise God. You ought to be able to shout the songs of Zion. You ought to be able to tell your co-worker, tell your family, tell your friends, I'm saved. I'm washed by the blood of the Lamb. The Lord Jesus Christ saved me. There ought to be some praise. He began to publish it much. He began to blaze abroad the matter. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Look back there at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. <coughs> Mark chapter 1. 
Notice his problem, his position, his plea, his praise. But notice the purpose. The purpose of the healing of this lame, uh, this uh, leprous man. There in verse number 45, the, or verse 44, Jesus speaking, he said unto him, See thou say nothing to any man. But go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded. Notice, for a testimony unto them. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of Bible just, just briefly this morning. Look back at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1 in verse number 14. Mark chapter 1 verse number 14, the Bible says, Now after that John was put in prison, after that... After that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, I preached before about Jesus came into Galilee. It was a precise timing. It was a, per a perfect, purposeful plan that he came into Galilee right when John was put in prison. Now, look back at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 quickly this morning. Matthew chapter number 11. <coughs> Matthew chapter number 11, and notice verse number 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding the twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in prison, where's John at? In prison. When did Jesus go to Galilee? When John was put in prison. So now when John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee John sitting in prison, and he heard something. Now when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered, said to them, Go show John again those things which he do hear and see. Tell old Johnny boy what's been going on. He's asking if I'm the Messiah, if I'm the one that should come or look for another. You go tell John what I've been doing. What I've been doing. You look real quick, real quick with me. Isaiah chapter 34. Isaiah chapter 34. <clears throat> we do not have time to get in this this morning, but Isaiah chapter 34. Isaiah 35, I tricked you. I tricked you. Isaiah 35, and notice verse number 4. <clears throat> Isaiah 35, and verse number 4. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Say, uh, say to them, excuse me, verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out in the streams of the desert. Now listen, this is a Messianic uh, prophecy. This is a prophecy about the Lord coming back. The son of David uh, is going to come back, and when he comes, the lame will walk. The deaf will hear. The blind will receive their sight. Go back to Matthew 11. Matthew chapter number 11. So John is sitting in prison questioning, are we looking for another Messiah? Or Jesus, are you our Messiah? What are we looking for? Jesus said, go back and tell him what you've seen, what you've heard, what I'm doing. I'm about my father's business. Go back and tell him. Verse number 4, Jesus said unto them, Go show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight. Prophecy fulfilled. And the lame walk. Prophecy fulfilled. Watch it. The lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear and the dead rise up. And the poor have the gospel preached unto him. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. 
He tells John, oh, don't get upset, John. Oh, John, you're sitting in prison. Don't be offended. Don't cry, little Johnny. Don't cry. Listen now. I am he. I am the Messiah. I am the one that came to heal the deaf and heal the blind and raise the lame and cure and cleanse the leper. Now, mind you, Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, all this is transpiring. I want you to show the purpose, the purpose of Jesus healing this leprous man. We'll get more into it, Lord willing, next week. But it was to show what would just happen at Capernaum. The religious crowd was stirred. They was astonished at his doctrine. What manner of man is this? He don't teach like the scribes and fair. There's something different about this man. All the city was moved about, and they all encompassed the, the, the house of Simon Peter and wanting him, wanting him to heal the sick, and they was amazed at his power. And Jesus was healing them and delivering them from devils and casting out devils. And here comes a leper, you know why? To show he is the amazing God. He is the Savior. He is the Messiah. He is your only hope. He is the one, the promised one, that will come at that very precise moment. He healed the, the lame man. He healed the fever. He healed diseases. He cast out devils. But he needed to heal a leper. He wanted to do the impossible but that they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's, he's the amazing God. You know what, he was so astonished, that leper was so utterly shocked, he didn't even hear what Jesus said to him. Immediately that leprosy departed from him, and he began to run out. And Jesus was like, hey boy, hey boy, don't tell anybody, go show the priest. You know why? Because anybody with any Bible knowledge would have known that when the Messiah comes, he heals the leper. When the Messiah comes, he's the one that casts out devils. When the Messiah comes, he heals the blind. This is him. This is him. And you know what? Jesus said, hey, listen, don't tell anybody else. You go straight to the priest. You offer for a sacrifice like Moses said. You do what they say, and they will know what happened, that I'm the Messiah. I'm the amazing God. You know what? Sometimes God wants you to do some things we don't even hear. We're so worked up, caught up in our own feelings. This man, listen to me now. He had an amazing testimony. And he was so stirred up, he didn't even hear what Jesus said. He just ran out, ran out and told Aaron, blazed abroad the mountain, published it everywhere he went. So much so, Jesus couldn't do more openly there anymore. <laughs> he had to go, a while, go aside into the wilderness for a while. What an amazing testimony. You know, the purpose there, if you look in verse 44, the purpose, verse 44, says this, for a testimony unto them you know why jesus healed this leper that everybody else could see how great jesus was you know why jesus saved me it wasn't just because of who i am it's to show how great he is if you knew who i was if you knew where i'd been if you knew how far in death to despair i was you would look at me and say that is an amazing testimony of an amazing god Hey, you know what a real amazing testimony does? It brings glory unto him. It ain't about the sin. It ain't about the despair I've been in. It's about the amazing God that lifted me up out of my sin, forgave me and cleansed me and washed me and made me pure. It's all about him. You know what an amazing testimony is? It's a testimony for others to see. You know what Jesus said? Ye let your light so shine before men that they may see your, your good works, and what? And glorify the Father which is in heaven. <laughs> you know what an amazing testimony does? It brings glory to God. You're, you are to go out. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hid. You know what the Bible says? You're the salt of the earth. You want to go out and be salty that other people can say, hey, I want what he's got. I want what she's got. Boy, that's an amazing testimony about an amazing God. And I want what they've got. Boy, there's something about an amazing testimony that it draws amazing test uh, uh, attention to the Lord's purpose. You know why the Lord healed that leper? 
for Jesus' sake. It wasn't just for that leper. Oh, I'm glad he was saved. I'm glad he was cleansed. But it was all for the testimony that others would look. Those religious leaders would have realized he's it. He's the Messiah. He's the one that will come. And they begin to blaze abroad and they would tell the people. Second Peter, or First Peter chapter 2 talks about let your conversations be honest among the Gentiles. You know, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Look there, if you will, in 1 Peter. 1 Peter, we'll just look at verse, uh, chapter 2 right quick. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. <coughs> an amazing testimony has an amazing purpose to it that others may see and glorify the Father. 1 Peter 2, verse 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. You know what? Whenever they speak evil of you and talk about you, they behold your good works. And the day of visitation, when Jesus does come, that second advent, They'll have to glorify God. It's all him. It wasn't them. I know her. I've worked with her. I know him. It ain't him. It was God all along that worked in their heart and their life. You know what you are? Look there, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. When's the last time somebody asked you what's in you? <laughs> When's the last, last time somebody said to you, what's different about you? What's going on with you? There's something peculiar about you. You know what? You need to have an amazing testimony. I wonder this morning if you have an amazing testimony. <laughs> have you ever realized your problem is your sin? <laughs> As Miss Angie comes this morning, I wonder this morning, preaching on an amazing testimony, the problems, your sin, the position that separates you from God. You've got to plea unto the Lord. There'll be a praise, and the purpose is that you will be a light, a testimony, glorifying God Almighty. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning as Miss Angie begins softly on the piano. Do you have...